magic or home automation. So for the longest time, I absolutely despised smart home devices. I didn't want something listening to me. The functionality of them was kind of rudimentary at best. And it seemed like the leader in this area was Amazon and everything they kind of showed off was just being able to spend more money on their site. So I just completely disregarded them. I'd never even considered it until now. So this led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I just wanted to see what all had improved. And lo and behold, there's this little product out here called Home Assistant, which is open source. It's local, there's no subscription, and you pretty much control everything. On top of that, I got myself some Sonoff, Sonoff, I don't know, smart plugs, because the lights that I wanna control are not necessarily smart devices. So these uh, kind of just allow you to power it on or off remotely. Uh, but these are Zigbee smart plugs. So if you're not familiar with Zigbee, I am no more an expert than you, but essentially it is a sort of radio frequency like Wi-Fi for those that are familiar, but it does not use Wi-Fi. So that means your Wi-Fi network does not get saturated with devices and everything becomes slower because things are taking up the bandwidth. Instead, it communicates on its own wavelength and therefore your Wi-Fi stays as crappy as it has been, but it doesn't get worse. Um, on top of that, I picked up this, the Zigbee Human Presence Sensor. So I figured I'd give that a shot. And then finally, uh, because this is the Home Assistant Green, they have blue, yellow, green. I don't know if they sell blue anymore, but yellow um, is a little more useful, I would say, from what I read. Uh, it's the precursor to this, so it's not like better or worse. It's just different. It comes with a Zigbee router on it, the thing that kind of controls this network. This one does not, so you have to get an attachment. I am a big fan of staying in an ecosystem. So because I got sewn off here and sewn off here, I decided just to go with theirs. Supposedly Zigbee is open source as well, so anything that Zigbee should be able to communicate on it, but I figured if I'm just getting started, I should probably just stick with products from the same company because I'm sure they tested them together, you know? Anyway, I am just as new at this as uh, a person can be. I've just watched some videos online and read some stuff and decided to take the plunge. So this is my weekend project. All right, so let's head downstairs because that's where my network switch is and I'll get into this a little bit more down there, but I just wanted to do a little uh, unboxing here. All right, we are down in the studio in my basement and this is where we're gonna get set up. I wanna get that light, that light, and then these two lights all connected to Home Assistant as like a trial run, because this is pretty much my space. It doesn't interfere with anybody else, and I think it would provide the most benefit. So first we're gonna do a quick unboxing. I just wanna show that it is 10 a.m. on a Sunday, and we are just starting to unbox, because I kinda wanna keep track of how long this whole process takes from start to finish. Not just, you know, that setup, but like unboxing to set up. So first off, let's get the Home Assistant open. Um, nice little sticker. It's kind of shiny, so the lights pick up on it poorly. Uh, warranty information, and then this looks like setup. It is four steps. So that should be pretty easy. Um, as I mentioned upstairs, this is kind of a self-contained little computer. It has just enough hardware to be useful, but not so much that it is cost prohibitive. Uh, this is $100 direct from them, like no problem. Got it shipped here in like three days. It was unreal. So if you're familiar with any like small computers, kind of like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or something, it's similar to that. It's just a single PCB with some hardware on it some interface. Uh, looks like it's got a barrel jack, two USB ports, a uh, HDMI, and then a Ethernet port, as well as a reset button, and then this massive uh, metal heat sink here to help keep it cool without needing a fan. So this is your home assistant. This controls everything. You can set it up on a Raspberry Pi and do all that, but 
like I said, I wanted this to be easy, so I went with the plug and play model. Uh, looks like it comes with an ethernet. Uh, yeah, just a pretty standard one. I'm guessing probably six feet or two meters for those not using uh, Freedom Units. And then this is your power supply. So it is uh, global and it does come with the various plugs that you would need for your country. I am in North America, so I will be using that plug. All right, that is all that is in this box. All right, so setup is step one, connect the ethernet cable. Ah, so ethernet first, then power, then wait for a yellow LED to start blinking, and then we break out the computer. So let's get that going. So, the, while we're waiting for that to finish, we will unbox some other things. Let's take a look at this. This is a Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle plus, and it is the dash E version, because there are two. So it, it's, it's just a simple USB device with an antenna. And what this allows is for you to plug this into the back of the Home Assistant and uh, create a Zigbee network. And as I mentioned earlier, the uh, Zigbee is similar to Wi-Fi. It's a wireless technology, but this doesn't use Wi-Fi, so your actual internet doesn't get bogged down because this is transmitting on different protocol. So, simple USB device. Set that over here for now. Um, now there are four of this. I'm not going to unbox all of them because it's going to be the exact same. <laughs> and it is a USB plug. Simple as that. It has a little button here on the side so that you can pair it with other things, but it's literally just a plug. You plug it in, plug this, and then you can take, you know, different light sources and really anything that isn't natively a uh, smart device and just kind of put it in the permanent on position and then you use this to turn it on and off by cutting power. So I'm using this because these devices are not necessarily home, like smart home devices and I want to be able to treat them as such. So I got four of them. There are two lights here to make this all bright. Then there are these Two, they're controlled by the same outlet, so I think I can get away with just using the one. And then I'll have one backup. I didn't really think this through. All I know is I needed more than one, so I got a four pack. And then the final device is this uh, human presence sensor. So we will check that out. So many folds. Alright, so this is the sensor itself. It's got a little button. And then a USB port. And then on this side appears to be the base. Oh yeah, magnetic. Which helps because then you can put it at multiple different angles. And it stays. And it looks like it comes with a double-sided stick tape from 3M so you can mount it on a wall. Uh, I think for now I'm just going to kind of set it on a surface. And then there's also stuff to truly wall mount it. 
And then it's got a USB-C to USB-A. Not my favorite, but it'll do. All right, now that the update is complete, we are going to get this plugged into the back of the router. Luckily, I had a uh, USB extension to get the USB not fitting issue resolved. Get this camera out of shot. Um, so now we've got the home screen and it pops up pretty much straight away. So let's get started with Zigbee. I've never done this before, so we'll create a network. Noticing that it does a lot for you but it is, it takes a long time, which is fine because it's doing it for you. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know what it's doing. Call this the studio, we'll add the area and finish. And we're going to move on to the next step of plugging in one of these lights. All right. Um, Oh, look at that, automatic. These are the S4, yes, studio, let's go. Oh. All right, so lights on, lights off. Oh, baby, okay. That was seriously too easy. Like the hardest part about this whole thing has been getting the USB uh, extension working. All right, now I'm gonna get all these lights plugged in and we will see if we can get it all squared away. Okay, that was incredibly easy to get everything figured out. So like, here's the dashboard and goodbye. Back on, back on, I mean, I don't get why I waited so long to do this. This was stupid easy. Uh, all right, so the last thing that's left of the, is this motion detector, and I'm pretty pumped. I think this is going to go extremely well. So let's get this set up. Okay. Uh, the tricky thing is, like, this needs to be plugged in, whereas the other ones were plugs. So let's hope this cord reaches. This is taking longer than the other plugs. This must be more of a, uh, like a more intense device, if you will. We're gonna go with studio presence. Put it in my studio, we'll call it good. And we'll go back. Detected. If I point it this way, All right, this one's gonna take a little bit more time to figure out because I don't know why it's detecting motion. It says it does have a 180 degree view, so it could just be that like it's too close. But nonetheless, uh, it's, it's wild that it works that easily. Okay, so I turned the lights off manually and it's still saying that the like motion is detected and it's not turning those lights on. Okay, so. Well, that doesn't work. All right. Well, I'm gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting, but just for all the sakes, it's 11.05. Took me an hour and five minutes with some USB troubleshooting and this troubleshooting, and of course having to rearrange things as I filmed. So that adds extra time to essentially get this studio automated to the point where I can do that from a computer. And you can download the app on your phone. This is wild.
All right, I will see you in three, two, one. Well, after a little bit of research on the internet, it turns out that that presence sensor uh, is known to be a little flaky and very sensitive and detects the slightest amount of uh, motion. So probably look into another one. Overall, I have to say setting a home assistant was way easier than I ever imagined, and I want to keep trying more and more things. I'm sure future automations aren't going to go nearly as easy, but hey, that's the uh, joy of trying this thing out. So I hope that this convinced you that you should probably get a home assistant and uh, check back as you see some of the new automations that I do. This was very basic. Like This is absolutely the first automation that people su suggest you do. So I'm not trying to say I'm an expert, but we're going to learn together. Anyway, uh, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. Consider dropping a comment down below on some automation I should try out next if you are into home automation. Uh, give it a like because that definitely helps the uh, algorithm. And make sure you subscribe to see future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the bend.